I'm sure every one of you knows uh, Congressman Ryan, but I'll give him a brief introduction anyway. Paul Ryan is a fifth generation Wisconsin native, currently serving his eighth term as a member of Congress. Congressman Ryan works to address many important issues affecting Wisconsin residents and serve as an advocate for the first congressional district. Um, he was the Republican Party's 2012 vice presidential candidate and is currently the chairman of the House Budget Committee, where he works to bring fiscal discipline and accountability to the federal government. He's a senior member of the White House of the House Ways and Means Committee. Yeah, not yet. Um, which, which has jurisdiction over tax policy, social security, health care, and trade laws. He has a deep interest in America's place in the world and, and the state of Israel. He has taken a leadership role in brokering productive compromise and encouraging bipartisan cooperation and civility in the US Congress. And uh, as, as I was thinking about giving these remarks before uh, Congressman Ryan came here, I thought I should look for ways in which Congressman and Ryan and I agree on various things. I worked the, for the Obama administration, but I knew that we had a lot of uh, things that we held in common. So Congressman Ryan, I found this. Yeah, you're a bass fisherman. Hey, that's a bass <laughs> What is that? That is a striped bass. Actually. Is it a striped bass? Yeah, okay. it's a striped bass. There you go. So, anyway, with that, I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. Thank you for that uh, very interesting introduction. <laughs> How many people kiss a fish before? Okay, that's two of us in this room, yeah. Um, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here and to welcome you to the Capitol. Uh, Tom Lantos was a friend of mine. Uh, I got to know Tom, we, I think we overlapped about a decade in Congress. And I was a young newcomer to Congress and here was this icon, this giant of a man, Tom Lantos. And uh, the one thing we had in common was my mentor was a man named Jack Kemp, who was close friends with Tom Lantos. And from that point on, uh, with that introduction that occurred when I first came to Congress by Jack, uh, Tom was just one of the most gracious people I ever served with. Uh, we didn't always agree on every particular issue, especially on domestic uh, policy. But when Tom Lantos spoke, everybody stopped everyone listened and everybody knew that it came from the heart there wasn't an ounce of malice in the man's mind in the man's voice and so he was one of those greats that we had come through here that set a great example which is sorely missed these days i would argue and so looking at his life story which which most of us who served with him and most of us since then um, know about uh, need to retell what his life represents and his work here represents his son-in-law uh, served in Congress with us. Uh, his family, I don't know if any of his family are here. They're, they're dedicated. For, you are his, oh, you didn't tell me that ahead of time. You're his grandson? Yeah. I didn't know that. I apologize. Oh, uh, well, that's great. Um, so I wish the mission of the foundation was already fulfilled. It would just be nice to say that this wasn't necessary. That's not the world we live in. I mean, it's kind of astounding to think that someone could deny the Holocaust. Um, it's kind of astounding to think that after what all the things we experienced in the 20th century, that we would be reliving these, that we would have to retell these stories, but it is what it is. When you hear the kinds of rhetoric coming from places like Iran, um, it just shows us that the mission is all that much more important, that Tom's legacy uh, which was a bipartisan legacy, is one that needs to be amplified even more. And so when we see the kind of foreign policy challenges we have today, and on those issues we agreed quite a bit with each other, when we see what kind of rhetoric is coming around the Maghreb, around the Middle East, coming from Iran, um, we need to speak with a singular voice, we need to amplify our voices, and we need to get behind the kinds of efforts that are, that are taking place uh, with the Lantos Foundation. And so each of us in the younger generations who had the opportunity to serve with the greats like Tom Lantos, who had the opportunity to learn from Holocaust survivors about their stories, uh, or who have family members who were part of the, the GIs who helped liberate these camps, we have to pass these stories on. We have to make sure that we take our kids to the Holocaust Museum down the street, that we make sure that this kind of evil 
that had occurred in many people's lifetimes in this, in this world that occur today is repeated and told so that we can try and sever this awful legacy of history. And so that's why I just wanted to say welcome to the Capitol. It is great to be here to just celebrate um, a really neat, great person. Uh, it probably falls on the information of TMI, but uh, Tom was a morning gym guy as I am. Um, every single morning we had basically a similar conversation uh, while we served together. And it, and it always went something like this. My friend, how are you doing this morning? How is your family? Tell me, what, how old are your kids now? What's going on? And then I'd ask him some question about his history, about his life, and it just, some neat story every time would come from Tom Lantos. Uh, a real class act gentleman who made us proud and whose life is one that is just an example that, that's great for us all and a story that needs to be told and told and told again. So thanks for coming. Welcome to the Capitol. And uh, let's make sure that this mission is fulfilled so that hopefully we don't repeat these mistakes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Welcome.